Me. To. To. A. 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 Me. To. To. So, good morning or good evening. Uh, anyone depends on where you are. Thank you for coming to the how to say chapter three of Lao Fan. So it's been uh, almost a year since we begin this second round uh, of Lao Fan talks. Uh, last last week, last last week, yeah, we talk about also the chapter three. Um, just to give you an overview, what we uh, look at. Like what direction we look at in the Alphan this uh this discussion this round, we begin with uh Maggie presenting what Leo Fan is why why Leo Fan is important, um, and Leo Fan provides a sort of a self help in terms of um hist historical experience the experience they have, and cases to us, uh, modern people uh, for us to uh, um. You know, understand how do we change our life, and I find it's here because it's useful, um, and it was being recognized by uh, Venerable Master Ying Guang, uh, Venerable Master Ching Kong, and I guess you can see from many uh, artwork and all the speech, he has been successfully um, accepted by the people. So the reason we're here today is to get into the nitty gritty detail. So that we know what to do, and best thing is we have homework, like a gongoke, like a merit and faults um, uh, assignment for ourselves every day. That way we can see how much merit and how much fault is there. So it was been, it has been introduced in chapter, I think chapter one, uh, and chapter two talks about reform. Chapter one talks about how Leo Fan begins his journey. Chapter two talks about uh, reform. Um, chapter three is where we are now. Last last week we talked about the ten stories. We didn't talk every single one of them. Uh, we talk about the main point. Talk about the main point of um, pick the three stories and use it as a way to highlight the point how Leo Fan presents his um, cultivate goodness. And one of the important one, because some of us not here, uh, one of the important point is he point out all these people, uh, they all use their heart to do the good deeds. They don't um, follow the trail of others. They do it at a time because it's right. They don't think too much about it. So one of the cases is a man save someone drowning, and he, Mr. Yang, and he save it without thinking. And the result is that while the rest were looting the properties of others, and the rest um, of the story goes as typical as the next generation and next generation got uh, imperial examination, basically got fame, prestige, and wealth. Um, this is the worldly. Uh, this is the worldly case example. The normal people, we all want wealth, we all want prosperities and stuff. So. <clears throat> So this case repeats again uh, in many forms, in 10 stories, to tell us that these people, when they do stuff, the good deeds, it might not appear um, immediately. But as you can see from their next generation, it's a hand-me-down, right, in a sense. If you are the person who originated this good marriage, started this, and cult cultivated so, uh, so much, um, and so much that your own family, your own, uh, how to say, surrounding people surrounding you, 
related to you has benefited that much. You can imagine the main person, the person who did this marry themselves, uh, how much do they have? So you can you can compare. So that, that one, the rest is residual. The main person who cultivate this merit, obviously they will get even bigger in next life. So in Buddhism, we call them, the residual, we call them the Wapau, uh, which is the, the flower of, of the trees. And in the main person is the root of it. So they can keep generating more flower. So let's move on to chapter, I mean, move on to the tree, to the eight types of goodness. We talk about the first type, which is real and fake, or real and false. Uh, to, to summarize, first one is real and false. Second one is crook and straight. Third one is hidden and obvious. Fourth is apparent and uh, actual and apparent. So on, on the surface or an actual, actual and apparent. Um, one, two, three, four, five is the uh, proper and improper. Six is half and full. Seven is big and small. And the last one is easy and hard. So the first one we talk about uh, Mr. Zhong Feng, Venerable Zhong Feng, how he um, talk about um, with all the other worldly scholars, we call it Confucius scholars, how they work, um, uh, how, they, how they think, how they work, how they operate. And most of them takes uh, the action of others instead of um, the context behind it. A lot of them saying this person being respectful, being kind, being uh, looks respectful, looks like very kind, um, they are good. This person looks like they are beating this person, scolding this person, this must be bad. And Zhong Feng, Venerable Zhong Feng said not necessary. He didn't say wrong, he didn't say yes. He should say not necessary. That means context is important. You need to put the context in place. Why did he do that? So I think basically context brings out the real intention of this person behind it. So we need to give a little bit of space of uh, thought for this person if uh, to see if things are appear as what it is. So he goes on and on uh, about uh, everything they bring out. And everything, every time they give out an example, he will say not necessary. And he say that um, as a person who cultivates, we must understand that the core principle is if what you do it benefits others or benefits the public or the, 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 big, the broader community, then it's good. If you only benefit yourself or your own, how to say, acquaintance or family, only on your own group, that is uh, not really true, not real enough. So your good, your 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 goodness must, I would say, aim at everyone, not just yourself or your own um, group. So this is a this is what he said, and he he go further and say people who follow their hearts is real. People who follow others, people's action is not real. It's false. So. Everything like this, we, we need to take time to look into it. We can't just, um, because if I'm saying it and uh, I'll give you a, a, a words uh, proof, but the thing is you need to look into it, think about these words and use it in your daily life. Only then it will become uh, obvious, like what is real, what is false. It takes experience. And at the same time, we, we need to see that some of them are literally bad, like hitting people and scolding people. We know abusing and all that, but some of them are simply like parents scolding or um, someone, good friends scolding others, try to correct their actions and habits. And while, while we free from the outside, it might seem like this person is disrespectful, but we need to see why this person did that. You know, maybe this person really uh, wants to help his friend uh, or family. So just um, be careful before we jump to conclusion, basically. The second one is crook and straight. So I'm going to go as far as number four, I think. Uh, crook and straight is, how to say, people who are, people who are um, polite, respectful. It follows on from reinforce. 
people who are real, people who appear as kind and have a reputation of being kind, um, sometimes they are not the material that uh, the sage would like to have as a student. Because if everything they do is just appear to be kind and they don't have the real quality inside, like um, they are true to their heart, they're not like that. They just appear as kind, they just follow whatever convention, protocols, down to a letter, but they don't they don't have the, something inside that they can take control, then they don't take control of themselves in a sense. Then the sage rather take someone who are appear as rebellious and appear as uh, a bit over uh, full of themselves in a sense. Some sometimes uh Ning so someone who are full of themselves, someone who may act out of the order out of conventional order, uh, appear as to those people who follow so-called follow the convention, the goody to shoes in the sense. Um, although they got good reputation in their village or in their, you know, peers, they are called the thief of virtue. It's a serious uh, title they put on top, thief of virtue. Whoa. So it reminds me to uh, a quote in Chinese called Gu Ming Diao Yu. That means like you're trying to fish for the fame uh, by appearing as a sage. So whatever sage do, you do it. Obviously, we need to learn from them, but not just the surface. And you appear as good, you appear as nice, uh, you do donation, you pray to Buddha. But inside your heart, you still have uh, a lot of Ren Wo Si Fei, maybe uh, a lot of um, calculativeness. You know, still being calculative, still being very, uh, still have a lot of hatred sometimes, maybe. Um, it, might be hid it might be hidden deep, no one can see, but if that person still have that ounce of it, uh, hatred, grudge, or jealousy sometimes, you might not know, then this person is not really good, isn't it? So it takes a, a very wise person, which, which is sage, that's why we call them sage. They can see through the person's surface many layers of it because they are you know very calm and deeply meditative uh, achieve deep meditation uh, tranquility so when they meet and a lot of experience um, when they meet that person or meet us they can see through and they will say okay uh, they will not say okay they are wise so they will just interact with you and see so basically what I'm trying to say is do not be a thief of virtue and and it does not mean that we need to be disrespectful or anything, be rebellious, but just just be careful of your heart. Like, don't just do all the, the Biao Mian Gong Fu, don't just put all the surface work, don't put all the work on the surface, uh, rather take more uh, care to the heart because little thing, little change in there will affect a lot, you, how you behave, how you treat people and all that. So, so that is the point. So it, he just summarized again, the worldly's um, guide or their ethical, um, the world's, the world's ethical uh, standard is against the standards, the ethical standards of a sage. Uh, using all this example, we understand that the heavenly beings, the spiritual beings, uh, all that gods and goes among all the histories, they all follow the standards of the sage, the person who see through things, you know, the the sage, the wise people, not the worldly people. Bring about like modern, like right now we have so much, you know, um, opinions, views, uh, we might think as um, the beacon of our modern civilization and it's correct, we should do that often. But when you look at the actual uh, cost of achieving that, then we understand that this standard is not really a good one for us in the long run. For example, um, yeah, this is quite tricky. I can't, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I want to go to that territory, but um, let's bring out an easier one, like technological development. So we all, back then, I think right now people are smart enough, they, they, they understand now. Um, back then they just keep develop, develop without looking at the earth. Uh, situation. They don't know. They just want to expand. And all these um, standards we use as industries earn more money, um, 
how to say, uh, being greedy is good for the society's progression. You know, that kind of mindset. Um, apparently, you know, back then it was the pinnacle. If you don't work or anything, you're lazy. So that kind of mindset is there, but it does cause us to be progressive in terms of technology, but in terms of um, environment, in terms of human uh, morality, ethics, the humanity uh, quality it has degraded. So at the expense of this, our environment, living environment and our humanities. So we get further apart from each other. Uh, we get less and less. We, we cannot catch up with the technological development. Um, that's what happened. So this is the standards of the world and standards of the sage or people who are aware of what's happening. See, standard of the world says that you should earn more, you should accumulate more, and then you should, um, how to say, enjoy your life and, uh, to the fullest, stuff like that. You're low, you only live once, that kind of mindset. Therefore, you can spend, you can do whatever you want without thinking about consequences, just because you have money and power. I'm using a very conventional one, and the and and the sage one would be 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 aware, cut down your spending, cut down, be frugal. Be generous towards others, be frugal towards yourself. And see, you can see the contrast now. They are going for minus. The world is going for plus. So if you want to learn the way, doesn't matter, the way to Tao, the way to uh, God, Christian God or Islamic God, or the way to the Buddhism, uh, you want to be Buddha, you always need to minus. You always need to give. You always need to minus your possession. You always need to minus your... Uh, Read. You need to minus your attachment. Different level of minus. You let go. Different of let go means you achieve higher. The more you let go, the the, the, the higher you achieve. So Buddha let go everything and get everything in return. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, don't follow the world. Be with the world. Live with the world. Work with the world. Eat with the world. Sleep with the world. I mean, it sounds strong. Sleep as in. Sleep. Uh, but do not do not get tainted by it. He guang tong chen in Chinese. It's like a light and the dust. They work together. Right? The light still work on the dust and reflects it, but the light is not tainted by the dust. Like a lotus coming out from lotus pond. Do not be tainted. Uh, you live with the mud and the water, but you still go out, emerge as a clean, bright lotus. But that's our, that's our cultivation goal. And that's why we're here. Uh, think about it like, even you go to Pure Land, you still have to come back here and practice. But the problem is, you go there, you have better faculty to be aware. But what I'm saying right now, right now, right here, right now, is you are already in here, in the mud, in all this, you know, messy world, messiness. You don't even know what is right and wrong anymore. There's so many ethical dilemma. There are traditional topics, which I won't touch here, but that people think is already set in stone. Right now, they were overthrown. Some of them might be overthrown for the good. Some of them might be do it for the sake of doing it because of progression. So think deep, think hard about it. In your heart, if you don't think it's right, doesn't matter what the outside world trying to tell you or what your family or people surrounding you are trying to say. Remember that um, in the end of the day, the only person who will walk on the journey after this is yourself and your karma. Not your family, not this world, not this government, not this society system. Those are temporary. When you reborn again in next existence, if you don't go to Pier Land or if you go to Pier Land and come back, it will be different. Things change. Let's not talk about birth and rebirth. Some people don't take it seriously. Talk about right now, 10 years ago and 10 years later. How big a difference is? Back then, before the iPhone, everything was working in more more or less internet and face-to-face. -face. Right now, with iPhone and for uh, everything, it gets more convenient to banking and all that, but it also gets further apart for people. Even they sit on the same table, right? So things change technologically, politically as well. I'm not talking too much in that. And, and, and everything, the system, the structure, the way people think, the way people dress. So which one of them is worth staying for? We always remind ourselves about that. That's also something I remind myself is it's it's temporal in a sense. Obviously, we need to do our job. We need to be serious about our role as whoever, son, 
brother, uh, temple member, and all that. But remember, we we, we got to move on when it's time. So back to the main point. We have to start washing from the depths of our heart. The only you know, only people who are enlightened knows. No one else knows. So if we wash our heart to a level, remember this comes after you have reformed. Because I, I myself has seen that I have been leaking so much buckets of merits, not just drops, buckets of merit like a waterfall. Everything I accumulate just goes straight down. There's not even a retainer, not enough. So think about it. It's, it's hard to do this. Wash it too. It's very clean. If we don't repent and reform. Repent as in we understand it's wrong. We don't do it again. Not in, not in, a, not in a religious way, but in a practical way. Like we, I reflect and I think uh, I have done something wrong and I should not do it again. But the problem is we do it again and we repent. And that repent becomes weak. Um, only when you look deep into your heart and say, it's time, you know, no one else. You don't have to talk to anyone else, just yourself. It's time to move on. Using all the condition outside that helps you maybe a new environment, a new life or something, or even the new directions of life, new way of living. Those things might help you, right? But if your heart has set in that direction, outside world will help you to go towards that goal. If you want to get, you know, get out of this afflictions so you have to ask yourself do you want to let it go these afflictions might not appear as affliction to you and me it appears as pleasures it appears as uh, a soothing uh, moment of this um, you know boredom or of this pressure pressure like or from work so it might not necessarily appear as affliction like what we say greed hatred anger no 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 it, appears, it comes Suddenly, and then you realize after, most of the time, right? People who are sharp in cultivation, they will be like, nope, I'm not touching it, bye-bye. Yeah, like, you ain't gonna get in my brain, man. But normal people, they usually, for me, I usually fall into it, get a taste of it, get so tired and so exhausted from it, and then come out and realize, oh no, it's affliction. As you can see, my tool is very blunt, in a sense. The In Buddhism, there are tools, right? They are sharpest tool, like Liu Tzu Hui Nen. Venerable Master Huinan from Zen. And then the, the, the middle two, uh, like Master, maybe someone else, I don't know. Uh, middle two, like not bad, not good. And then the blunt two, who, who really, really slow in reacting to it and get drifted away so far from the path. Only realize, oh, I'm drifted away from the path, 3 km, so I need to swim back. So it takes a lot of energy. But that's what happened in our journey, many lives, not this life only. <laughs> so, okay, let's go back. Um, he didn't just say that uh, the teeth of virtue and just leave it there. He gives you a more, um, how to say, more supporting uh, descriptions. So, so how, how, how does it consider as teeth of virtue? Because some part, someone might appear as very respectful or even worse, appear as um, kissing your boots. Uh, uh, for lack of a more sophisticated English word, kissing your boots. So kissing the boots is one of the cases where it's crooked, it's teeth of virtue. Obviously, it's obvious to us when we describe it, but some people might not be able to see through it and or maybe enjoy the moment of being the boot kissed. So <clears throat> the opposite is pure loving heart like really care for others really really like like um really do want to care for others and concern for others no matter not not uh, even just a word from them you can feel their sincerity and that is straight so it's always at the heart and he further and say that if there is an ounce of um rush towards the world, towards the people, work, towards the world, towards their surroundings, then it's crooked. Grudge, not even hatred. Hatred is very strong, guys. Grudge. If there is just pure respect in there, like no guessing, double guessing people, no trying to seat, uh, like, like not, not trying to um, 
uh, how to say, expose people that kind of mindset. You know what I mean? Um, they know, but they don't. They don't let. They don't give much thought into it. They just focus on uh, doing what is right. They're doing, uh, being, being true, and and do not get diverted by all these uh, people estrangement. I don't know how to call it. Um, the the gossips, the dramas. You know what I mean? Um, and then he further say, if there is a person who just treat the world like a toy, you know, they are not serious. Um, this is different from the one we talk about, like, let go of the world, do not be attached. Remember, this kind of person, their heart is focused, concentrated, they are pure, and they don't have this kind of once, like, as in prank, like, playful. Like, like they're trying to um, mess around with people. It's fun, like, for, 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 for time to time, but, like, when, when it comes to um, your attitude, daily behavior, if the heart is just simply treat. Uh, not serious, um, like not um, truthful to what you're doing, not dutiful to what you're doing, then it becomes uh, unreliable, untrustworthy. So, so, so be careful of that. Like, do not mix up both. You know, letting go attachment means that you still have to do your job, you still have to do your duty, you still have to care when you need to care. You don't need to be mechanical like how I described it, but what I'm saying is you, you just do what is needed to be done. If you're a mom, you better do your job. If you're a dad, you better do your job. Something like that, like I, I better do my job. I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a mom. And I can't just say I let go of attachment. So my son is Rahula, you know, the Indian word for attachment. So I'm going to let go of my Rahula. Remember, Buddha has a whole palace taking care of his Rahula before he go and become a monk. We don't have that. So make sure it's taken care of if we are going that direction okay so uh I'm, I'm i'm out a little bit so we're going back to the number three uh those those things need to be very minute because a little bit of misunderstanding will cause you to go towards the wrong direction the point is the heart okay so always follow that but when it, in operation is not it's not you don't think too much that much you just you just accumulate this here you understand what it is when you happen when it happens to you in your daily life, you use what you learn, accumulate so far, to make a decision. And sometimes it doesn't give you one second. It, it just do it immediately. So just be aware of this all the time so that you can use it when you need it. What is yin yang? This just say yin yang. We all like yin yang. So hidden, hidden and obvious. So hidden is yin, which is shade. Yang is obvious sunlight so what the most obvious one is if you do good for for and let other people know let other people know that is then it's obvious then if you do good without people knowing at all without asking for it without letting anyone else know at all then is hidden virtues hidden virtues is something we always emphasize on in chinese culture ying de, qi ying de, sun ying de. so we always use that word like if you accumulate goodness, they call qi ying de. If you harm your virtue, hidden virtue, especially sun ying de, because this is the basis of you benefiting your own generations of descendants. Just like your 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 bank account, the wealth accumulated wealth, you will do it and inherit to your next generation. So does your karma, your good karma. If you do it without people know, in Buddhist term, you have accumulated a vast amount of good karma. In there and because fame is a form of expenditures all right we use the money money term if you have fame out of the, your kindness that means as a result of your kindness you already spend them because people are praising you people are respecting you people make your life easier obviously you can't help it sometimes people just promote for you you don't even know that's natural. That's fine. That means you have a big enough karma to, to accept this kind of expenditure. But if you just do it yourself and you, you keep promoting it for the sake of promoting it, if you're promoting it for a cause, you're joining a cause, that's different, guys. That's already public, well-known. Then you join it so that your friend can join it. Maybe blood donation, uh, save the baby, save the, the war-torn ch children. That's fine. But if, if it's something you don't need to, promote it's not known to the public just do it and 
like we said, let it go. As if it never, never happened. When you do it, you take it seriously. You think of every meticulous details, resources, anything in your power to do it. Once you do it, the best thing is it never happened. You know, and then this is how you accumulate hidden virtues. I'm trying to be concrete on that, guys. So, um, and even better than just accumulate uh, of hidden virtues or bank deep bank account. When someone defame you out of nowhere, defame you, slander you, scold you, give you a very, uh, very disrespectful look, something like that, and someone talking behind your back or something, and you have, you truly didn't do anything. They say, they accuse of. This kind of person has one of the biggest merits they're waiting for them because you're not wrong. So obviously you will, you will get compensated, but you need to be patient. If you be angry, if you fight back, talk back, and all that, uh, which will be sh shown in chapter four, humiliation, uh, humility. Um, if you if you if you fight back, talk back, and all that, which which will happen normally, then you lost the opportunity. If you can hold back from talking, uh, from debating against the slanders, defamation, uh, even though you didn't do anything, and let the truth come out by itself, or you can investigate later, but not reacting to it on the spot, then uh, your, um, how to say, your merits, your hidden virtue has been accomplished. So this is what happened. So this is number three. So the last one before I um, go into the discussion section. Uh, remember, so this number three is yin yang, the hidden goodness and obvious goodness. Um, this thing is very, like I say, very, very gray. You um, you need to observe it. You need to be skillful at it. Are you skillful because it's a skill? Um, what what is tr what does not need skill is your heart. Okay. What needs skill is how to use the heart. Um, even though your heart is good, otherwise it becomes all good intention. All road to hell are paved with good intentions. Because it's not skillful, guys. Um, Buddha has spent hundreds of lives to accumulate this look that can impress people upon one look. He, because everyone likes good looks, so he accumulate ten, after he attained enlightenment and all that, he accumulates hundreds of lives of merits to have good looks, so that you guys were like, "Oh, Buddha looks so good." Some people really like Ananda just go, "Buddha looks so good," so I become his student. But obviously, why? Because if people look very good in the sense like very proper, straight. I'm not using the the modern world standard of good. I'm talking about like really, how to say, safe and warm kind of complexion. Then they have accumulated that in many, many lives. Some, and just for our information, uh, offering flowers gives you a good look. So go ahead. You're welcome. Uh, Okay, so uh, where's your, where's my chrysanthemum? Hmm? Okay, uh, okay, so offering more flower, guys. Don't go to Korean uh, surgery shop or anything. Those are against the virtues. Those are harming your hidden virtues. Accumulate more. Trust me, you don't need to wait next life. At the end of your, I mean, towards your, uh, as you grow older, you get look get better looking. Yeah, in the in the in the sutra, they say that people who you know, like people who offer light. To the to the Buddha or of light to the people at the roadside, they get more wisdom. people who get surgery for the sake of cosmetic, not because of saving lives, they do good here and then they do bad here. Not just they, us. Think about it. We do good one day and then someday we we'll be angry. Then we obviously we commit negative karma. That thing will like okay. Right now I'm enjoying my coffee. I'm enjoying good company. This is good. Good, good fortune, right? Having a good fortune being with you guys, it's good fortune. And then I spend it, right? As I as I go, and all this, you remember in our world, we always think that you know negative, positive, we can offset the balance, like mortgage and all that. But in karmic terms, straight from the mouth of I think from Buddha or the King Yama, Gong Guo Bu Neng That means there's a term in Buddhism. Your merits and your faults cannot cancel out themselves. They are independent. That means if you have 100% of merits and 20% of faults, 
this 100% of marriage will overpower the votes, but it will not cancel it. It will weaken it. So it will be good in the heaven realm if this world cannot take you. And then you enjoy this 100, it will minus one by one, one by one, one by one. That 20 is still there, guys. It does not say, even you become Buddha, the 20 is still there. So the thing is, Buddha is a, a not attached to it. It's quite, it's quite um, I, I drag it away, but, but what I'm trying to say is if you um, want to accumulate hidden virtues, then you will have uh, deep um, merits hidden in there. Everything you need merits. Going to Pure Land needs merits. Um, getting into your uni favorite university needs merits. Getting a good job needs merits. Just a different level of merits. Um, the one that needs the most merit is Pure Land. So, her way is Su Fei. What is right and wrong? Uh, what is apparent and non-apparent? Um, apparent and actual. My apologies. Fei is apparent. Su is actual. In this case, it's not right and wrong. So, I think you guys heard of this, but this story needs to repeat again. So, when um, Confucius students, one of them is called Zi Gong, he ransomed the ministers and the wives of the ministers from the other nations that you know was uh, that was being uh, made prisoner during the war, last war. He did not accept the gold, as because government say anyone who ransom our own ministers and their family will get the gold from the government. He didn't accept it. He's like, nah, I'm rich enough, or I I want to be good. It's kind. And but Confucius did not see contradictory. He did not say, uh, very good, my student. He said, No, you shouldn't do that. What have you done? And then his students say, Why? So his teacher, Confucius said, Confucius said, um, it's your fault. I mean it, it is it is a fault that you have committed because everything a sage did, a person with high prestige did, they can change the culture of the place of the area that um, that he's influencing. So everything they do is an educational opportunity for you, for them. So if you do not do it right, you miss the opportunity to educate them. So you cannot just follow your own protocol. You have when you do it you need to think in the terms of the publics. So everything you operate, the central point, the target has to be the publics. You, Zi, Zi, uh, not Dylan, not Zi Gong himself. When Dylan's doing stuff, Dylan cannot think about just th what Dylan wants, what Dylan don't want. What you want, what you don't want is one thing. What the public actually is in their condition, in their actual background, their actual economical background, social background, environmental wealth and all that, economic background, stuff like that. You need to think about that. So right now, my our country, Lu, is in high poverty rates. Everyone's very poor. Very few were like you because you were a minister. You own many servants and many carts of cars lifting you around. They don't have any of that. They can't even eat, feed themselves three meals. So I'm, I'm just being detailed. He just say that the Lu country were poor. Uh, we don't have rich people much here. So how can they do what you do? If everyone's, because when you ransom from other nations, you need to pay. Where did they get the money for paying? If they don't get the ransom money, uh, get the rewards from the government. So what you did is in right from now on, very few people will be able to, very few minister of the Lu and their family will be able to return to their own homeland. So his other students, Lu, save people from drowning. And this person thanks, the person who was saved, thanks him with cow. And Lu just accepted. And when he went back to Confucius, Confucius look at it and understand what happening and say, very good, Zulu, very good. Um, from now on, Lu country will have a lot of people proactively saving people from drowning. Um, everyone say, Zigong did not accept reward for his good deeds. Shouldn't it be hidden virtue? Uh, Zulu uh, accept the reward uh, even uh, for his good deeds. Shouldn't that be obvious goodness? Uh, yeah, we use the previous standard, right? The, the previous category, but how much influence and what what's the effect it has on the other people? The previous one is about yourself, but this one is about the publics, everything. Like if you're influencing your whole family, then what would you what would be left? 
what impression will it left for your family or your community? So Zigong do not uh, should, Zigong should be lower than Zilu in terms of merits, in terms of their virtues, because Zigong accept the gold. I mean, sorry, Zilu accept the cow and Zigong didn't accept the gold. But because what he did, what Zilu did is he allowed other people comfortably accept rewards without feeling ashamed. In future, everyone will do it and everyone will be rewarded. They will be more actively doing it. Whether they accept or not, if you're just one person by yourself without any influence, then you don't, really don't need that reward. You can just give the reward away. But over here, this person are a person of influence, person of power, influencer we call it in social media. So people who actually has influence, they when they do stuff, all right, they will affect a lot of people and they have they have to see not just now, they have to see what's the consequences. Is it good or bad in the long run? And not, not just now, but for, for uh, further ahead. Not just one person, but the whole world. So basically, I already mentioned that. So right now might be good, but if this good turns bad in the long run, or turns harmful, even worse, harmful in the long run, then it might appear, might be an apparent, it might apparently be a kindness, but in actuality, in reality, it's not. So this one is not talking about their heart. They don't say their heart is not kind. Zigong is very kind, right? He don't say, he don't accept the gold. The thing is that he's not skillful enough. He he did that because he thinks he's kind, so I don't need the money. But he did not think further ahead. His position, his current position and his current prestige can affect a lot of people. Oh, Confucius student didn't accept the gold. We, how can we accept it? If we accept the gold after ransoming, we'll be ashamed. Stuff like that. Okay, so our society operates on prestige, guys. Like prestige and influence. So this is why it's very important. Doesn't matter what era it is. As long as there's human, human and human. You want to understand one person and stuff. There's the prestige, there's the fame. There's how they operate. Banks and all that. Trust. So, yep, he go further and say, uh, the wrongs and the rights. So, so something something may appear as right, they might not be right. And um, this is not that fairly. It's just simply not, dis not respectful. This person might not appear as respectful, but in fact, he is being respectful. Say that person, uh, I don't want to drag. Um, facing to the scene. So this person is not uh, appearing as um, promised, fulfilling the promised or being uh, trustworthy. No. Yeah, this person might not appear uh, being, how to say, um, fulfilling his promise towards uh, others. But in fact, he is fulfilling a big promise rather than this small promise. Uh, same goes for compassion. You know, some people might appear as not loving enough towards family or children, but in fact, they are training this person to be uh, more resilient, stuff like that. I don't know. So this one needs life example to uh, rectify. I have Gong's example, but I can't think of others yet. So we can talk about it. Like, have you guys met anything that uh, they are actual it might appear as kind, but it turns out into something um, not so good in the long run. Yeah, we can talk about this now because I think that's it for today. I am um, not being a very wise person, but what I'm trying to uh, answer is just do at the level you are and understand the, the, the actual standard and actually and actually doing it is different because right now we are in the world of you know reality and expectations and they are not separate necessary there's just a matter of progressions and just now going back to ego and all that those are those are very high level to discussion right if you want to operate we don't think of am i having ego and then all that it's too much it becomes rocket science and it makes if I promote Yao Fan or promote any Buddhism like this, and no one wants to learn Buddhism anymore. So, so <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, all we learn here, they are standards. 
they're not like um how to say you have to do it right now like it will be this is what buddha did this is what leo fan's experience did he to bring this out from his experience that means he has 10 years 20 years 30 years of kung fu in this and for us we need to understand how far he has gone sometimes we can't see because we're not him so going back we need to understand which level we are so when you're doing it like i say like when you're doing it you you you, you will give whatever consideration one thing is your ability to give the other thing is that person the person who receive your givings are they are they going to be positively or negatively affected what i'm saying not thinking about it is not when you do it you just don't don't care about it when you do it you think of all the parameters and all that like like what you did you understand that person might not be quite good at handling money so homeless that's why we might be very prejudiced or judgmental but if you look at him and say i would rather give him a food or give him a shelter or agency or shelter something that can help in the long run that's a good thought um do it and do it according to the circumstances that you observe i have i don't know anything but what i'm trying to say is when you do it give your all understand it, all the parameters it's nothing wrong with thinking about it but the the, the thing is after and before so after it happens uh, we just we just don't think of it as a thing anymore it just let it let it be i mean let it disappear so that's how you accumulate virtues when you do it if if you're not uh, thinking thoroughly or lack of experience and you might make mistakes on the way maybe you know you might end up causing this person going back into his gambling habits or something or you've seen this person buy secrets instead of food using your money if you regret then next time you say i will not do this anymore i will do i will buy food like what you did i think you already know our life is short so okay um so going back to the main point is know which level you are don't um like i bring my own example here i'm not a sage i'm a normal people as you can see from the way i speak i think too much as well and i have a lot of temper issues because i'm very agit very easily agitated like very very t um rushed kind of person so i do what i need to do so this thing you don't have to be a sage like you just do what is right at the time i think for sage to be a core sage they don't have to maintain 100% perfect posture or anything what a sage did is they are very good at what they doing they are very good at being good so good that they don't try to be good all right so good that they don't say i want to be good they just do it it every every smell of them it smells good i mean as in sounds wrong every everything they do is good they don't think about it so when you do so much as like if you do so much so much that it eventually becomes a second nature let's bring an example xu zhe nu shi is a mother teresa of asia right she's in singapore her name is miss xu zhe so uh, her name is xu so miss xu she is uh, she used to be a uh, sisters in a church catholic church but then she um she came out and she go on her own um she, she wants to help more people not found an organization so she goes and pick up the leftover cupboards and everything and she 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 start you know helping other old people she's the old people herself she taking care of other old people uh and she she do it and all the goods uh as as her prestige grow naturally she didn't promote herself everyone knows the neighbor there's a good lady she who help the poorer neighborhood to get high every day food shelter sewing their clothes so even beds and mattresses she picked up anywhere from the store the leftovers and all that so she did that for how many years i think few decades a good few decades longer than my life basically um longer than i live in this book so she's passed away by the way and so her own condition of living is so low she just li literally lying on a mattress or something on the floor and she only have one fridge for food and there's not much food in there everything she has she give it to others and she met master ching kong back when he master ching kong was touring in singapore i mean staying in singapore 90s so so master ching kong said this is this person without trying to learn the five without learning five precepts a uh, three triple refuge 10 uh, meritorious deeds sanyetao all that 
prerequisites of a four tzu, of a good Buddhist. He, she learned nothing, but she accomplished everything 100%. She's, she, doesn't, she, she just needs a ceremony. She already qualified that any one of us to be a Buddha, Buddha student, actual Buddha student. Like a qualified Buddha student. All we do is we are kindies, kindergartens. We haven't entered the actual actual uh, standard required by Buddha. As Master She Wu say, right understanding. You need to be arahat to be actual. Or you need to be a, gain the first level enlightenment to be actual student of Buddha. If you want to put that uh, 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 level really high. But for operating matters, this lady has actually achieved that without trying to be. So she is good. Because she is good. She is a sage, not because she's labeling herself a sage, because she's doing it out of her heart and she do it very well, very skillfully, because she's experienced at it. So this is just a matter of you keep doing it. Um, learn this, because we don't have her we don't have her quality in the beginning. Like sometimes people are just born with this because they accumulated that in the past life. Right now, we don't have that ability to just do it and then do it right, with the right timing, right amount, and the right way. So we need to learn the way. So this is like our eyes. We, we learn this for, for our eyes so that we can walk the path better. You already have the heart to help people. Keep doing it. Don't worry about ego or not. Ego is just, uh, it's just a description. Think of it as a word. We play with words all the time. Don't worry about that one. Like we, we already know that, you know, we try to help as many as we can in our circumstance. Then go ahead and help. Eventually, when you read back after you're doing this, you understand what it means in Delphan, what it means in Buddhist Sutra. So in, in conclusion, um, think what you need to think when you're helping so that you can help them because you want to help that person to the best of your abilities and to the best they uh, receive. That's it. Nothing else. Once that's done, that's done. Uh, you can rethink back like a beautiful memory, but let it go eventually. It will, it will go away anyway. So keep doing it. Um, understand why you're doing it. It's important, but do not get bound by the teaching first. All they're saying is this is what Elfan accomplished with 60 years of his life. What Master Ching Kong has accomplished with 90 years of his life. When you listen to his sutra in this machine, this is his achievements. After 60 years, that's his level. I might love his word, I might love the way he described it, but I'm not touching the level he is at if I'm not practicing it. If I'm practicing it according to his guide and I reach the same level when I listen back to his, that taste is different. I no longer have a lot of small questions because all these questions, ultimately the person who can solve it is yourself. And to solve it, we need to let, let it go first, understand our level, practice according to our level, uh, like the example I gave it to you, um, and then ask uh, and, and, and learn as you go, grow, keep growing. So, so that's it for the uh, speech today. Thank you so much. Hope you um, enjoy, enjoy the process. Guys, enjoy the process. Don't worry too much. Um, remember, Buddhism is about letting go of your burden, not adding more burden. Remembering that, then you you do it to the best you can, to the best of intention, to the best of abilities, to the best of wisdom you have. Understand we have not achieved full wisdom, so be patient. Good things take slow, take slow, slow path, okay? Take slowly. All right, let's, uh, all right, let's chant 10 times Amitofo and dedicate our merits. Ah, me to for ah 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 me to for Ouch.
share the educational merits. May the merits and virtues grow from this work. Adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire to invoke the body heart and cultivate the teachings for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. We also dedicate this merit to all the victims of COVID-19, to all our families and friends and their karmic creditors living or passed away. And to dedicate the merits to all Thailand practitioners of the world, uh, our temple in New South Wales, in across Australia, across the world, and all the uh, religious leaders, righteous ones, so that they all may contribute to the world peace. Ami Tofo. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, stay safe. Get your third boost if you haven't.